Good afternoon, it's uh, TB about 2 o'clock uh, Wednesday afternoon. Um, I think today's the 13th of February, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I just wanted to say hello this afternoon. Um, what I wanted to get on here and talk about right quick was uh, I, I noticed some of my videos were a little bouncy and stuff. Uh, such as my mountains, uh, because I was driving down the road, I, I loaded up some of the mountain pictures and I was going a little, probably running along about 30 mile an hour in, it, in the truck trying to get this done for dark and I was trying to get uh, some film of the Cavanaugh and the uh, Sugarloaf and the Poto Mountain. See, the Sugarloaf uh, is a 2,000 foot or better mountain it's an actual mountain. It sets to the east. It's the one that has looks kind of like a hill to itself and has a plateau out on the side of it. And then they, we have the Poto Mountain, and then on farther down, you, you, I don't have a picture of the Kaimish Mountains. They're even prettier. Uh, but uh, the Kavanaugh is is like one foot being to the west. The Kavanaugh like one foot being a mountain. It's one of the tallest hills in the world. They say that the four-wheel driving uh, out there is one of, is like the third roughest uh, territory for four-wheel dri driving in the world. Like that's what I've been told by the guys that do four-wheel driving up there with their jeeps. Sometime maybe I'll get a, uh, some film of that four-wheel driving and you know how they climb the mountains with those jeeps and they let the air out of their tires to till it's almost flat. They use one ton rear ends because half ton rear ends just twist right out from under them on that rocky territory. It's rough driving up a bluff. I mean it's some of the stuff they do is pretty spooky to me. I wouldn't want to do it. But I've watched them and they, they do it and I know they've turned some of them over and when they do they just get out and turn it back over. They have winches and stuff to get out with but and other jeeps, other buddies out there, four wheel driving with them, four wheeling. It's a sport they do here, one of the things. They also have hang gliding down here, where they jump off a cliff and fly around on a uh, hang glider. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I just thought I'd let talk a little bit about where I live. I'm right in the middle of, the, of that. I live in Poto, Oklahoma, in the city limits right now. I'm kind of in the suburban out here area. But near the near the lake, it, it's, the lake is called uh, Lake View Edition. Yeah, my grandpa and grandma settled here, and they lived here almost uh, 50 years together. I know they made their 50th anniversary, and they passed away now. And this is their homestead I'm living on. My uh, mom and me live here now on the place, and uh, that's all that's left of the family, besides my cousin uh, that lives across the street from me. And then I have another cousin who lives down to Shady Point. He has Howell's Beef Jerky. Y'all might have heard of Howell's Beef Jerky. He has good beef jerky. Uh, like I used said, I used to make it also. He taught me to make it, and he's very good. Uh, if you need homemade beef jerky, he's the man that you'd want to go to because he has some good stuff. Homemade beef jerky. Some of the best. Okay, um... With that being said, I just wanted to let you know what the mountain pictures was put up on there for. It's just to show you a little bit of my area. I'll try to get some better video later on. Uh, I'm not real good cameraman. As you can tell, I'm not a cameraman. In <laughs> uh, fact, uh, driving down the road like that, I noticed it wasn't doing real swift. It was too bouncy. I will get some better pictures. We also have... Uh, you know, these wagons and, and teams, a uh, guy's got buggy, a uh, buggy across town. Sometime I'll get pictures of that sport where they do that. We have, uh, a rifle range down south of Hodge down here in the mountains that we go to sometimes to shoot at rifles and such. Uh, also, uh, I go up on top of Cavanaugh sometimes and I'll do some sh target shooting up there some and I, I use uh, the bows and arrows up there because I can shoot farther and get some better pictures and you'll see what that PVC is capable of doing. I can shoot it, it'll shoot about 25 yards real good, pretty good uh, out there and I'll get some video of that. So and someday if anybody wants a PVC bow built, I do build them, I can build them, 
uh, different styles of them and I don't mind building them but it if you want to build them yourself I was just showing you how you could do it and it wouldn't it wouldn't be all that expensive but the time you pay for shipping and it takes me a couple of days to put one of them together especially the hundred pound bow I'd have to have probably 75 bucks for it and you know I might uh, plus the uh, shipping cost and if you want to if, if you want accessories to it be more than that you know like if you wanted arrow sights stabilizer bar on it or uh, for instance a, a boat regular bowstring I can buy them or I can put but they will cost more of course uh, those are accessories now I can put the 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 uh, hay bales twine on there that I have access to because they don't cost me that much to get that that's cheaper than the actual string but it works just as good the hay bale string does or at least it does for me I don't I've never had one of them break yet it's got a lot of little fine strands in it and it'll hold up to 1500 pounds they, they tell me uh, they bail them round bales and big round bales up with them so I know if it can handle that much weight it sure will handle a little 100 pound bow or less I, I make 75 pound bows uh, I make the little uh, half inch PVC bow they're all round style I haven't made very many flat yet I was uh, getting into that I think my uh, crossbow is going to be okay I'm going to get a new piece and uh, a new uh, two and a half or two and a quarter inch uh, piece of PVC as next payday uh, when I get paid again and I'm going to redo that crossbow uh, I think what I done I heated it too much and, and uh, got it weak in the middle and uh, when I cut out my tiller in front, one side I checked it and got to looking at it, and it's got a little bit of a, a, a off the. It's not not straight across, a little bit off cut. And when it, when you get something that ain't pulling even, that could explain why that collapsed and then me weakening the uh, the PVC. So I'm going to give it another try. I better. I'm going to hop off here now. I think they just give us a 15 minute session on here. But uh, I, I thank you for tuning in to TB's and uh, Cabin, and I will be back with you with more tips in the future. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.